Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how we can start validating the incoming requests in our REST API in ASP.NET Core. Uh, we're going to use a package called Fluent Validation uh, for this purpose, but I will also show you how we can do it without any other uh, package and explain why Fluent Validation is a better approach, at least in my opinion. So let's go in our controller and we're going to take a look at the um, Tags controller and in here in the Create endpoint we are creating a tag via a create tag request. So this is our request, the, the contract, the API contract incoming that we want to validate. And what I want to validate against is I want this tag name to not be empty and to not contain any special characters. So only alphanumerics. The way we can do this by just code is just go in here, which is the create method. And we can just say if request dot tag name, for example, string dot is null or empty, which means the tag name is an empty uh, string, then return bad request and say something like error equals empty name. However, I'm going to have to add such a string for every single one of these uh, validations I want to do because I also want to do alphanumeric checks and in the future I might also want to add other things here. So obviously I cannot just have an if statement for every single property of my contract. So the other thing we can do is we can go here and .NET Core supports some attributes and those attributes can do validation. So I could say I don't remember everything by heart, but I, for example, if I had a, um, a field called email or something and I wanted this to be an email address, I could say email address. And then if this value was false, then I could say if model state is not valid, so this automatically ties into the model state, then return. And then I could translate the model state errors to uh, API errors. The reason why I don't like this approach either is because I'm going to have to have this pretty much the same code all over the place to check that the model state is not valid and then translate those errors to model state errors. Uh, I also don't like this approach because we now have our validation logic or at least some of the validation logic on our contracts, which it feels like it's breaking single responsibility principle. I don't think that the model itself should know anything about how it needs to be validated uh, so for that specific reason, I don't want to have it here. So how are we going to do this in a better way? Well, here's where the project fluent validation is kicking in. And I'm going to show you right now how we can make clean validation for our objects. By the way, I don't want you to confuse contract or request validation with business logic validation. Completely different things. But we're going to see in the next video how they're going to both return in the same way. So we're going to introduce um, a new error model here, which we're going to be returning. And eventually everything should be using that very same contract. And I will explain why. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go to NuGet and I want to say Fluent Validation. And I'm going to add the ASP.NET Core package. The reason why I'm going to add this package is because it comes with handy extensions that automatically register all our validators in our API. Let's see how we're going to add this. So I'm going to go into my installers, MVC installer, and there should be the add MVC line somewhere here. Oh, here we go. So let me just break it down a little bit so it's more readable. And what I want to do is I want to go here and I'm going to say add fluent validation. So just that should be enough, but we can also specify some configuration here. And we're going to say register automatically all the validators from an assembly. And we're going to say assembly containing our startup. It's the same assembly scanning technique I showed you before. And this should find everything that extends the abstract validator class. So what is this abstract validator you might be asking? So I'm going to create a new folder here. And I'm going to say validators. So that's the name of the folder. And I'm going to create a new class. And this class will be, how was the contract name? Create tag request. We're going to copy that. And I'm going to say create tag request validator. 
And what this needs to do is it needs to extend the abstract validator and then we provide the name of the thing we want to validate. So create tag request. So abstract validator and the contract we're uh, validating and then this class. And the only thing we need to do is create a constructor. And in this constructor, we have this rule for method. And what we want to say is I want a rule for the tag name. And what rule do we, do we need? Well, we need two rules. First and foremost, this must not be empty. So the not empty rule. And the other thing is it needs to match some regex. Uh, and the regex is actually pretty straightforward in this scenario. And it doesn't matter if you're not familiar with regex. It's, uh, I can get it. It's a very complicated thing. Uh, this specific um, rule is very simple. So I'm going to just talk you through it. So it says if this starts with and contains a to z lowercase or a to z uppercase and then zero to nine numeric and then um, empty space as many occurrences as we want and then uh, ends the, here then this will validate alphanumeric characters and space it's um, not very complicated in this specific scenario but i know it can get very complicated in more complicated scenarios so here we have our two rules, so this can fail in two different ways. So this is our validator now, and because we have this MVC installer here, it will automatically be registered in the DI. This means that now this validation will automatically be applied here. And let me just show you that. I'm going to say if um, model state is valid, is false, and I'm going to stick a breakpoint here. And I'm going to run the application. So let's bring the UI here. I'm already logged in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say test create and I'm going to put some special characters here. So this should break into this breakpoint. So this model state is no longer valid. This is because this validator is now injected into our MVC framework and because we're validating against this contract the model state is invalid. And at this point, I could just look into uh, the errors here and I could go to values or even keys and the keys will show me that the tag name property uh, is uh, bad. It has some bad value. And if I expand the errors, I can see that the error name here is tag name is not in the correct format, which is right because that's the default error code if something is not in the correct format. The problem with this is that we're going to have to do some translation here to some error model and then return that error model um, on every single controller that we want to do validation. This is not a really elegant solution and we're going to have to be repeating ourselves a lot. Um, before I show you how we can clean this up, I want to go in the contracts and I want to create some uh, contracts here. We're going to need two contracts. The first one is the error response and this will be the response from now on that we're going to return on every single thing that returns something. So an error. And what we need is a list of error. It could be an error model, it could be error code. Do not add this UI once we're gonna create our own uh, type of this. I'm just gonna say errors here. And I'm gonna say that initialize it with a new list of error model. And I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna create a new error model here. And we need two things. We need a field name and this will be a string. And what this field name is for is just to let the consumer know that this specific field is the one with the error. And then we also need a friendly message to display. So we're going to say message. Imagine if this is an application like a mobile app, it will automatically uh, get this field name and then say, OK, I'm going to have to show this message under this specific field name for validation purposes. So if I go back, this should be resolved now. Yep, this is all fine. And now that we have our error response. We are going ahead and we're going to create a filter. I haven't talked about middleware a lot in this uh, series yet. Uh, and that's because we didn't need them until now. But in this video, I'm going to um, do this validation thing with a middleware, essentially. A filter is a type of middleware. So I'm going to create a directory. I'm going to say filters. And we are going to make a new class named validation filter. And this filter will be implementing the iAsync action filter interface. And let me just implement this method. Now, what 
is a middleware. Very br briefly, a middleware is just a single step in our application pipeline. So the MVC pipeline goes like, something hits my API, I'm doing this, then this thing is calling the next step in the pipeline, this thing is doing this. So imagine like a request comes in, I'm validating that the user is authorized, this is one middleware. I'm checking that the model state is correct, and this is another middleware. I'm doing something in the controller, and then I'm returning, and there might be other middlewares as well. In the very beginning of the pipeline, you might actually have a log middleware that just checks how long the request took and then log some data about it. But very briefly, just imagine it like a step. And this validation is what will happen before we get into the controller. In fact, this await next thing, this delegate call here, if I change it to nascent, this is actually what we'll call the controller to uh, go ahead and do some stuff. What we want to do is, so imagine this like before controller, after controller, after. And what we want to do is before the controller is being hit, we want to validate the model state. And how are we going to do that? Well, at this point, the model state is actually set because the validator has already done the validation. What we want to do here is just get the invalid state and return this state to the user. How are we going to do that? We're going to say if context dot model state dot is valid, and we're going to say if it's not valid, then we're going to do some stuff. First, we want to get all the errors in the model state. So errors in model state equals context dot model state dot where and we're gonna say where x dot values value sorry dot errors is more than zero to make sure that we have some errors there sorry errors dot count is more than zero of course and then we're gonna say I'm gonna just return it as a dictionary so to dictionary and then key value pair key key value pair yeah and I'm gonna return the key value pair dot key and then key value pair key value pair dot value dot errors dot select and we're gonna be selecting the error message field and we're gonna say to array and now we have a dictionary with the error field and the error name well the description and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say error response equals new error response. And then I'm going to have a nested for each loop. The first one is the errors in error state. So error goes here. And then these errors can have sub errors. So each field can actually have multiple reasons to be, um, to be giving an error back. So for that reason, I'm going to say for each sub error in those errors um, create a new error model so error model equals new error model and then here i'm gonna say field uh, sorry field name equals to error dot key the key should be the name and then sub error dot and the sub error is actually just the message, so I don't need to do anything. And the last thing I need to do is I'm going to say error response dot errors dot add, and I'm going to add the error model. And this will populate this error response, and I do need to return it now. So how I will do this? I'll say context dot result, and I'm going to say new bad request object result, and we're going to return the error response. And I also need to return because if I don't, then this will call the next middleware I'm going to get an exception because I already set the result here. So this is all we need to translate this. If I go back, this should all be enough for me to actually test this out. If I remove this code, before we test this, there's a single thing we need to do and this is to register the filter in the MVC uh, pipeline. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to say, we go in this add MVC method in our uh, installer or startup. I will say options.filters.add 
we are saying validation ah, if I had to type properly validation filter and this is enough so I'm gonna run this application now and test it so my application is running so if I try to create a new tag just execute this tag is created so if I list them the tag is here but let's try to put some special characters here like these symbols and we're gonna say execute and now we get an error contract back saying errors field name tag name and what's wrong with it well tag name is not in the correct format uh, of course if I also change this to empty and I press execute then it says tag name must not be empty so we're getting an appropriate description based on the validator we set and you can always customize that if you want to uh, with a, with error code extension of course this means that we need a validator per thing we want to validate so in our post controller if I go here and I go to the create post request I also might want to have validation in the name of the uh, post or the tags or whatever and ideally you would want uh, same validation here because we are creating tags at this point but it, you should be following the same pattern so we just go here rule for what we want to validate against and then we say what we want uh, you can also have custom validation here so if I just uh, do rule for dot tag name again I could say must and the must method accepts a predicate so I could do all the custom logic in the world I could say contains special text and this will also validate against that uh, but this is for more advanced scenarios this is all I wanted to show you in this video leave a like if you like this video subscribe for more content like this and I'll see you in the next video keep coding